we will study few more properties of the charges. The first, if I am rubbing this material and this is getting charged, there is a quantity of charge. In physics, every physical quantity can be measured. So, there will be a measurement of this charge. This charge may be initially less or more. Then, how much charge can be created on this material? The answer is very, very large charge can be created. So, there is no limit and I will write it this way. Very large charge can be created on a body. Okay. The charges are positive and negative. Two types. When we develop by rubbing positive charge or negative charge, then both the charges are created in equal quantity. So, while creating a charge, while creating a charge, we cannot create a single charge. We have to create charges in pairs. We have to create charges in pairs equal positive and negative. Positive and negative both will be equal. If I am rubbing it with my coat and creating charges here, if these are positive charges and its quantity is 1000, then definitely 1000 negative charges are created on this cloth. It cannot happen that I will create here 1000 and here it is no charge or it is 500 charge. It has to be opposite and it has to be equal in numbers. This is a must. Now we are talking about positive charges, negative charges, different charges. Practically, where do we get these charges? So, this experiments were done by Faraday and uh, he gave that which material will carry positive charge and which material will get a negative charge. He did many experiments. How do we get, how do we get it started? So, first thing, when we rub a glass, and it gets charged. We say arbitrary, we decided that this charge we will say positive charge. So, what represents a positive charge? The charge on a glass rod. Similarly, negative charge is represented by a charge when a plastic rod is rubbed. Okay. What about the other things? So he rubbed many things. Anything which is repelling glass is positive and anything which is attracting plastic charge is positive. Anything which is repelling plastic charge is negative. Okay. So with help of this principle, he made a series which he called Faraday's series or electrostatic series by Faraday. In this series of material, he put a few day-to-day -day use material and uh, in this there is a rule that whenever any two objects of the series are rubbed together, the one which is higher in the series will get positive charge and the one which is lower in series will get the negative charge. This will help us uh, just as a uh, fast index for you to find out whenever we rub two things, then which one will get which charge. Like if I ask you that uh, I have a silk hanky, with that silk I am rubbing glass, then what is the charge on silk? You see here glass and silk. So glass will get positive and silk will get negative charge. It is higher on the series. Okay. Now, I take another sample of silk and rub it with plastic. Plastic is where? This resin. 
resin means plastic if i rub with plastic then plastic is lower and silk is higher so silk and plastic when rub together in that case silk will become positive and resin will become negative so on silk if i ask you on silk which charge is developed when we rub it you cannot reply whether it is negative or positive unless you know it is rubbed with what if silk is rubbed with glass it become negative if it is rubbed with plastic it becomes positive so this is uh, just a reference point uh, at that time it was used a lot and this gives us a representation on top of the list glass glass rubbed with anything will always become positive and sulfur we don't use practically much so resin or plastic rubbed with anything will always become negative so these are the two representative of different charges now another thing i wanted to discuss is now once we know positive and negative we had gone for a term that was electrification what is meant by electrification giving charge to a body is electrification okay we have given charge to this body positive charge we have given charge to this body as negative charge when we touch the two when we touch the two and then again separate it again separate it and now we find that this both charges have converted to zero this process when we touch the something happens the charges nullify each other and this we call discharge this is charge and this is our discharged body so the vanishing act of the charges is discharge how it has happened what we have seen if we bring these two bodies highly charged bodies very close to each other practically when we bring them very close to each other even without touching we see a spark here this spark and after seeing the spark we see that both have become zero charge and their charge has become zero we say the bodies are discharged and normally practically this spark this spark we give the name as discharge because after this these bodies get discharged so spark has become mononymous with discharge of electricity and this we see uh, all around us like in stones in many other things when we rub it there is a discharge so uh, the example of spark very big spark is lightning in the sky lightning in the clouds and right from initial days of science it was a big question with the scientist what is this lightning in the cloud which we see shining and with this advancement of our knowledge for the first time the physicist said that this is this spark of electric discharge what we see in the clouds this was a very vague statement because nobody has gone to the cloud and seen whether this electric discharge is there what we are seeing on the earth <coughs> but benjamin franklin said no it is the same and he did his very famous uh, kite experiment kite and cloud experiment and in this he just raised a kite a kite up to the level of the clouds just to see whether there are charges how we will see there are charges before that there was one activity and that activity we should understand that if there is a charged body how we will come to know that it is a charged body so answer is very simple put your finger in the plug and you will come to know what is a charged body okay it gives you a shock 
so giving shock is and after that that body gets discharged this shock we receive modern days we get it from this electricity but in earlier days also if you get a very large container of copper rub it keep on rubbing it it will collect a lot of charge and after that if you touch it you will get a shock okay we have such things even now in physics when you go to bsc or the higher classes you will see those generators electrostatic generator and they give very severe shocks okay so shock was our uh, significance that this body is charged so he sent that kite to the sky to the clouds thinking that there will be a shock in the thread but he did not get it so he could not prove then he said maybe that thread is the culprit or the kite is the culprit so he put a uh, key a metal key and he tied it with the kite with the kite he yes here here he put a metal key that metal key will send the charge but again he could not see any charge here okay he was disappointed and by the time he was removing his kite down at that time the rain started and when it was raining suddenly he got the shock here and he was the first man after getting the shock who has become very happy in place of shock he was very happy that yes there is electricity in the cloud and this was a mark achievement telling that whatever spark we are seeing in the clouds that is basically the same electric charge what we are doing here in glass and plastic when we touch that so that was the first time it was proved that that is the electricity and we call them electricity in the sky or whatever studies we made it there were many studies which were made with that so that is discharge and this is all about electric discharge so this we have studied now what is meant by charge what is meant by electric discharge and how the bodies get positive and negative charges so now in the next class we will switch it so far what we were studying those were very old days and by that time atom structure was not made when all these things were happening on the parallel front there were other scientists who were doing the experiments with the material that a small material is known as molecule the molecules are many types uh, hundreds of thousands of types but all those molecules are made with hardly 100 atom all these different combination make the molecules like h2o h2o2 co2 ch4 but all these using 100 atoms now there were more experiments going on that all the atoms are different or the similar and there were results that all atoms are made by only three type of particles or they have only two components one is nucleus and one is electron moving around it now the people were studying the properties of nucleus and electron and there they found a strange thing that all electrons are carrying negative charge and the electron is something which they could not break till date they could not break and that is the smallest particle which was carrying electric charge and that was responsible for electric charge what we are telling again and again that matter carries electric charge they found the matter and that matter is electron and that gives clarification of everything which we have studied so far and they made a new theory known as electron theory of electrification and that gives us the modern theory of uh, electricity which we study nowadays so from there our actual study of electricity will start from electron theory and this we'll do in the next lecture electron theory thank you